Hey, 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 what's up, what's up, guys? Troy ATXRC Productions, 3DR Solo Owners and Productions Group on Facebook. Um, coming to you guys today real quick. We are going to do this quick and, you know, clean and dirty if you would. But uh, we are going to do a motor pod swap. I just want to show, first of all, how quick and easy this is to do for anybody, um, which is a huge, huge uh, design Hey, what's up guys and gals? Troy ATXRC Productions and 3DR Solo Owners and Productions Group. Uh, coming to you guys today with my solo. Uh, yes, it's blue. If you haven't seen it, go check the new video out. Um, we are going to today do a real quick motor swap. I have a motor pod that's bad and I can tell you how I know it's because it first of all makes some weird vibrations, but it mainly, when I spin it, sounds much louder and you can just hear that there's probably bearing damage. Um, I do keep my bearings oiled and all that, so it can't be that. It just has to be a bad bearing that just happened to happen or something. I have no no crashes, no drops. It hasn't been beaten around. It's actually, it's odd. It just presented itself randomly one day. Um, not 100% sure. I will tear that motor down at some point and do a video on how to tear a motor down and how to check it and rebuild it. Um, because if it is just bearings, I could probably just rebuild the bearings. Um, I will say that I went and contacted 3DR. They asked for a video. I sent them a quick video of the sound. They sent me a motor pod. This is not the motor pod they sent me though. The motor pod they sent me, they sent me to the wrong address. Um, my Solo was originally ordered at my old residence and so apparently they had my B&H shipping address originally, but I've changed all that and even registered the Solo to my new address, but they sent it to the wrong place. Uh, I was able to scrounge up a motor pod though, don't ask me how. Uh, and so I still have my re regular one coming, I, you know, out of pocket on this. Um, so we're going to do a motor pod switch. I know uh, we're already two minutes into this, so I uh, just want to make this quick and clean and dirty. So let's go. Uh, we are replacing this motor pod here which for me, I believe is motor pod one, two, three. So flip it over. Flathead screwdriver to pop the lens cover up. And this is going to be as quick and simple as four screws. These four screws that I'm taking out are hex because I replaced them. Again, go back to my video. These are M2 by 10 screws. These are... Cap head, I believe. I don't remember, I'll be honest. Cap or button, they're the curved heads. So you also need to make sure when you do this, you have some blue Loctite laying around. You're gonna want to clean the Loctite off of the old screws. I highly recommend replacing stock screws with M2, point, or, uh, M2 10 millimeter length screws. Um, somebody has said that 12 millimeters work as well. I personally wouldn't get into the 12 range. I do use 12s on my legs, um, but even them, if you look from the inside, you can see they actually extend about two millimeters more than they have to. So why use extra if you don't have to? There's my hex screw. Don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, the pod does come with its own Phillips screw kit. I Toss those in the trash. <laughs> all right, so we have all the screws out. Mine are kind of sticking because I have a little excess because of the paint. So I'm just gonna flip it over. Oh, they're stuck in there. Just make sure they're all the way out before I try to pull this pod out. They're all the way out. They'll fall out in a second. So flip it back over. And you're going to lift the pod from the motor. You're going to kind of lift up and then tilt it in and pull out. So mine again is a little in there from my paint job. It's really making it stick. So I'm going to pull it out, up, and then slide it out of the arm. This portion here is in the arm where it says 3DR. So that's the portion you're trying to kind of get out. Now here you'll just unconnect the powers. 
The great thing about these powered bullets that they used, it's really smart. Another great design feature along with the motor pods is each one, one's male and one's female on the same end so you can't accidentally connect them the wrong way. It's really crucial. Bottom side, You want to be careful with this connector, but it is in there nice and firm. Grab all of the wires and pinch them really hard to pull it out. If there's any resistance, don't pull too hard on those wires. Use a little flathead screwdriver and kind of get right in between the gap and just push it out. Um, it should then come free. So there's a motor pod. I can still hear and feel that it's definitely out of something. Got a bad bearing somewhere. So new motor pod. It has a nice little clean plastic on it. We'll rip it off. All right, so we got that motor pod out and now we're gonna go ahead and put the next motor pod in. So we got our other motor pod. Um, we connect the lower ESC wires. Then we will connect the uppers, which are the main power wires. These, you wanna make sure they're all the way in nice and firm. If you feel that these connections are not very firm, that they can slide around, which they shouldn't, um, take a look at them and you can kind of spread open the banana plug a little bit to kind of make better contact and kind of keep it in there snug. But you shouldn't have to do that. Um, so after that, this is kind of the only tricky part is these wires, you got to kind of get them in there. You got to kind of push them in with your fingers and then use the ESC to kind of slide it in. So just like we pulled out by lifting up and out, we're going to push in the same opposite direction. So we're gonna input the front and then we're gonna input the rear and then we're gonna make sure it's nice and seated. It should seat flush all the way around. If it's not seated flush, I would open it up and check those wires and make sure they're not pushing up somewhere, kind of folded up underneath. Uh, but besides that, that's that. My, my screws actually stayed in because of that extra paint that's around it. I'll throw the extra screw in. I'm sorry, we forgot a huge crucial step here. I actually need to pull my screws all the way out. As I said, you need to make sure we lock tight these bad boys, right? So I just use my fingers to kind of make sure there's no paint or nothing on it. You really should use like uh, some actual cleaner on these. Um, because I have oils on my hands though, after I'm just gonna kind of wipe it. I'm okay with this method because it's worked for me. Ideally, again, any screws, you should really kind of use some actual hard uh, cleaners on it, some parts cleaner. Use my finger to kind of scrape off that little bit of paint chips and extra Loctite. All right, and then make sure we put just a drop. Loctite is not meant to be used in huge excess. You put a drop around the lower threads and as you thread that in, it attaches, or it goes onto all the thread. It doesn't take a lot, guys. I mean, you know, screws have very low tolerance for um, how much gap there is in there. Also, do not tighten these all the way until you get all of them in, just like any other, you know, project or job you do. Finger tight, get all of them in, and then equally kind of distribute the leverage down by tightening them all down.
All right. And that's it. Pop a light cover on it. Get that boy up. Throw a battery in it and see what happens, right? Blinking green, everything's good. We got the right lights on. Red, red, white, white, we're good. And yeah, cool. There you go, how to replace a motor pod on a 3DR Solo. Pretty easy, right? Cool, y'all enjoy. Have fun, fly safe, fly smart, fly 3DR. Bye.